morning and welcome. If you'd like to mark the readings for this morning, you can find those at number opening song this morning is number 622, The Canticle of the Turning. Number 622. This morning we'll sing verses 1 and 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us this 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In a special way, we welcome our visitors, and we also welcome our Eastside Crusaders football team. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Now let us give glory to God. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power, above all, by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now would those going to children's liturgy please come forward. My dear children, today you will hear the story of the beggar and the rich man. They will learn, you will learn that God wants us to be thoughtful, to think of others, and to share with others. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, look with love upon your children gathered here. We pray that they will become more sensitive to the needs of others and that they will always reach out to help others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now you may go to children's liturgy. Go and listen to the word of God. Go and listen to the word of God. God has the words of everlasting life. God has the words of everlasting life. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. They eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall. Improvising to the music of the harp, like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they're not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm number 93, 9 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Jesus Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in inapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously every day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. <clears throat> and he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment 
in these flames? Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, this week, once again, our Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Amos. This reading focuses more on systemic injustice than on concrete injustices. Amos prophesies that the leaders of Israel will be sent into exile because of their failure to care for the needy among them. He begins by describing their indulgent lifestyle laying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches, eating lambs and calves, writing music, drinking wine, and anointing themselves with the best oils. The key word in this passage is complacent. They became complacent in their lifestyles. They were not concerned with those less fortunate than themselves. They were not concerned that the northern part of Israel at that point was threatened by the Assyrians. Amos' challenge to Israel is his challenge to us today. We too are often complacent, although I think the pandemic and now the economy have threatened our complacency. For example, as long as our lives are comfortable, we often do not get too concerned about those struggling within our community. As long as we have our jobs, We are not concerned when others lose their jobs. As long as we can pay our medical bills, we are not concerned about those who cannot afford good medical care. We pay little attention to the problems facing people in poor countries throughout the world. Lack of food, lack of water, lack of shelter, lack of medical care, lack of freedom, religious persecution, endless war, even slavery, and the list goes on. The challenge to us is twofold. To become aware of these issues, that is, to open our eyes and our ears, and then to do something, however small, to make a difference, that is, to open our hearts. The parable in today's Gospel is unique. It is the only parable where a character in the parable is given a name. However, it is not the rich man who is given a name, but the poor man who lay at the rich man's door covered with sores who would gladly have eaten the scraps of the table of the rich man. Although Jesus does not give the rich man a name, popular liturgy, popular literature has given him the name Dives, which means rich man. The parable does not tell us anything about Lazarus, except that he lived in abject poverty. Nor does it tell us anything about the rich man, except that he lived luxuriously. Both died. Lazarus was carried away to the bosom of Abraham, and the rich man was buried in the netherworld. When I was younger, I thought the sin of the rich man probably was that he failed to care for Lazarus. However, in the context of the reading from Amos, I would suggest that he probably did not even notice Lazarus. Although Lazarus was on his doorstep, he did not even notice him. Like the leaders of Israel in the time of Amos, he was complacent. He was content with his life. Like the first reading, the parable challenges us to open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts 
to those in need, both near and far. At the beginning of the homily, I mentioned systemic injustices. In discussions concerning the poor, we're often tempted to point out that many people who are poor are poor through their own fault, that there are jobs for those who want to work. However, Jesus did not make these distinctions. Nowhere did he tell us why Lazarus was poor. The truth is that some injustices are institutionalized. In other words, no one is acting unjustly, but systems can foster injustice. For example, salaries are often unjust. Athletes and celebrities are paid disproportionately high salaries. At the same time, some hardworking but unskilled people are not paid enough to even support and educate their family. One of our fundamental principles of justice is that workers are owed a living wage. We need to ask how we can work to change institutionalized injustice. My brothers and sisters, in Luke's Gospel, Jesus challenges us to be merciful as God is merciful, to be compassionate as God is compassionate, to be sensitive and responsive to the real needs of others, both those that are expressed and those that remain unspoken. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. <clears throat> I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, beginning glory to judge the living and the dead, his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us pray for the peace of, the, of God's kingdom, which we have been promised. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may the people of Little Flower Parish stand united in prayer and dedication to the way of the cross and the way, the little way of St. Therese. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Bob and all the priests of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, May they know the prayerful support of God's people as they teach, guide, and sanctify us in Christ Jesus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials throughout the world, may the gospel be the light that guides their decision making. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, may the hope and promise of God's love bring comfort and peace to their days. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here and for those we love, may the Lord help us to cling to what is good and true. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially Jeannie Zimmerman's uncle, Sylvan Majin, Andy Wiedekamp, James Knorr, and Don Wils Wilser, who died recently, and Doug Furman, for whom this Mass is offered, may God welcome them to the heavenly banquet. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer for all the intentions we recall now in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, in your unbounded mercy, you have revealed the beauty of your power for your constant forgiveness of our sins. May the power of this love be in our hearts to bring your pardon and your kingdom to all whom we meet. We 
ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gift bearers for Mass this morning are Anne Traub and Marie Comer. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, 
He freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the, of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray to you, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us express our gratitude to you, our parishioners, by inviting you to join us for the annual parish feast day and appreciation dinner next Saturday, October 1st, immediately following the 5 p.m. mass. Dinner will be provided. RSVP to the parish office by this Monday if you plan to attend. Forgiven, a study of what the Sacrament of Reconciliation is really all about, is starting this Monday, September 26th. Details are in the trees in, or you may sign up in the back of church. Would you like to meet and make new parishioners feel at home at Little Flower? If so, please consider being a mentor for one of our new parishioners. Sign-up sheets are located at the church doors to volunteer. Contact information is in the trees in. Thank you for your consideration. Join Little Flower and Project Outdoor Nativity Scene to help bring back the true meaning of Christmas. It is our hope the nativity scenes will serve to brighten up your neighborhoods and remind our children of the importance of the Holy Family in the Christmas season. Little Flower will receive a portion of your purchase. Information is in the trees in and on our website, and a sample is available for you to see in the gathering area. Confirmation class for high school youth is officially starting this weekend, Sunday, September 25th at 3.30 p.m. in the Parish Center. If you need more information on this class, please contact the Parish Center. Please join us for coffee and donuts immediately following Mass in the school cafeteria. Our little flower novena will continue this week, Monday through Friday at 5.30 p.m. The novena service consists of prayers, a reading, and communion service. So please try to come. The solemn closing of the novena will be next, sun, next Saturday evening at the 5 p.m. Mass, and it will include the procession with the relic of St. Therese and the second graders dropping rose petals. And as was mentioned in the announcements, again, um, please plan to attend the parish appreciation dinner next Saturday evening after the 5 p.m. Mass. Again, we do appreciate all that you are in Little Flower Parish but it's important to RSVP. As was mentioned also, the outdoor nativity scene, an example of the one is back in the gathering area. Uh, when I was in school, we used to have, they used to have bumper stickers, put Christ back into Christmas. Um, and that's kind of what this is about, making it very visible in our yards. Finally, we welcome tonight, today the Eastside Crusaders football teams. They are composed of students from Little Flower, Holy Spirit, Our Lady of Lourdes, and Holy Cross. First of all, we have the 34 team. They're playing today at 1 o'clock at Cecina. The 56 team is playing 2 o'clock at Cecina. And the cadets will be playing at 445 at Mount Carmel. So let's welcome them and wish them well. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our closing song this morning is number 724, 724. I heard the voice of Jesus say, This morning we'll sing verses 1 and 2.